We are talking about a documentary we watched called oh, yeah. King of Clones. Triggering. And, yeah, triggering. We just um, watched this just to watch it. We mm-hmm. weren't going to do like a video on it or anything. Yeah. But there was so much to this mm-hmm. documentary. Yeah. Do you want to tell yes. the fine folks what yeah. it's about? Because I have a little bit of history. This is something that I lived through yeah. that I saw, right? I yeah. mean, I didn't live through the you know what was going on in the documentary, mm-hmm. but I had seen it on the news. So there was this doctor named Huang Usok, so Usok Huang, Dr. Huang, mm-hmm. who um, pioneered human cloning. Like he claimed that he could, you know, uh, clone humans and then this will take care of a, of a plethora of possibilities like you know diseases like you can mm-hmm. clone yourself and like replace organs and and he made these claims that this will revive will put korea in you know korea will achieve its greatness <laughs> yes um i because yeah. i don't even know where to start with this shit like it's so loaded what's the line i kept saying over and over to you the greatness like, of korea yeah, yeah you were like but what the fuck and i was like but for the greatness, for the greatness of, Korea. of Korea. Yeah. Um, and then he also claimed that this would put a stop to, like, reunite North and South Korea. It basically bizarre. was going to change everything and yeah. make everything better, right? Yeah. And it, he was a very grandiose man. And this was the 90s. So, like, people didn't really know any better. Like, you know, we didn't really have the internet. Mm-hmm. So, whatever they said on the news, everybody just kind of took, right? Yeah. Without a grain of salt. Everybody was right. just like, oh, there's this great man doing great things for the greatness of for the Korea. Korean, yeah, for the greatness of Korea. <laughs> this went on for nearly a decade, and mm-hmm. it turned out that he had made false claims. It was basically... Bad research. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit of a, an Elizabeth Holmes kind of situation where he had faked a lot of the research results. And also, this is the big one. Mm-hmm. The human eggs that were used for the research had been basically uh exploited uh what do you call it basically coerced maybe maybe like you know he was using these eggs to clone humans to do these experiments so he needed women Mm -hmm. to volunteer their eggs yes but he ended up using the eggs of the participants in the research study right and they which didn't a really no, have no. a choice, yeah. Yeah, so that whole right. idea of choice, like, this is the, you know, we live in Korea. I've, mm-hmm. I've lived in Korea off and on for quite a number of years. I mm-hmm. feel like I have a good sense of things from an outsider's perspective. You really do. Yeah. But there's this fine line when it comes to the idea of coercion. Mm-hmm. And in this situation, we're not told to give up their eggs per se per se but it's the (laughs) suggestion Mm -hmm. that this will be again for the greatness of korea Mm -hmm. so when we laugh about that term it's a real thing Mm -hmm. but also their own careers yes yeah so it would yeah that would probably be like the the suggestion that Mm -hmm. um you know if you want to keep your job or you want to keep yes on this because this was a medical study that was being hugely funded Mm -hmm just ridiculous and the and the pressure and the microscope no pun intended <laughs> on this mm. was massive he was like a jesus christ for the korean people yeah so and, we had to produce results yeah and we find out also that the international science community community i guess was skeptical mm-hmm. to say the least mm-hmm. so there was a lot of pressure on this guy yeah that he put on himself, to be honest. Yeah. So he yeah. started making up stuff. He started making up stem cell. He like just changed the data. There was one the guy mm-hmm. who was the whistleblower for his yeah. research worked, lab worked for him. Worked. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he was a member of his research lab, mm-hmm. and he. And I think the reason why he did it is because he showed him the, the paper. Yeah. And he just started. Writing in new data. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Making up stem cell yeah. data. Yeah. To fit like a certain... To fit a certain thing. Number, I guess. Yeah. That that part I didn't really understand um, because I'm not a scientist. So, But basically he doctored. Um, he, he doctored it. And mm-hmm. I know that this is a thing in Korea. I don't mean to... I'm sorry. I don't mean to like bash Korea. I um, do. It's okay, totally a thing. I don't. <laughs> 
but this kind I can, of stuff I, happens. I can go on record to tell you for yeah. sure that this happens yeah. a lot. Yeah, they, well, I, and I can mm. tell you from teaching as a professor mm. in Korea that this kind of stuff happens. It, mm. It's There's some shady research going on in, in Korea. I'm sure there is, yeah. And it's just to get published. It's just to get papers published. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. So what was the thing that really kind of stuck with you and upset you? With well, for me, you? the most upsetting aspect of this were two things mm -hmm. that are basically the same thing. First of all, the fact that there were women in this country who volunteered their eggs for yeah. the greatness of Korea. For the greatness of Korea. <laughs> that was really disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, also, I remember what it was like in the 90s, and I understand that it was a different time. There was sort of like a thing where, you know, we, we had a financial crisis like yeah, so two years later. Yeah, so what was the climate of Korea at the time that this was going on? Um, there was still a lot of this, you know, we all need to achieve greatness together, mm -hmm. you know? So there were remnants of like the war, like the 60s post-war mentality, which it, now this would never happen because like, you know, women now... Women younger than me mm -hmm, would mm -hmm. probably not give up their eggs for not research. Today. No. Um, mm. Also, let me. Um, apparently, I have never done IV IVF or I've never frozen my eggs, but egg extraction is actually like really painful. It's very uncomfortable and it's a very long and just a really uncomfortable process. So it's not something that you just like, you know, give up. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even like giving like giving blood, you know, it's it's very, very, the process is very uncomfortable. And damaging to the body, right? And damaging, it turns out, mm -hmm. to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, hormonally, it can really mm -hmm. affect you. And that's why IVF is such an emotional and physically taxing process, right? And so the fact that there were women who just volunteered this for the nation... And it doesn't feel like that long ago. It was only 30 years ago. That part really disturbed me. The yeah. second part was that Dr. Huang continues to claim that this is going to be a good thing. Like even now in 2023, yeah. his yeah. interviews suggest this is going to revolutionize, you know, life and the world. Mm -hmm. And he still has hopes. He, he's now working in the United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. um, cloning mostly camels, but he's an animal cloner, right? It seems like he has completely justified what he does. I, I don't see any remorse. There was that one bit where he says, I know that this was on me and I have to put this on me and I'm the one responsible for this. Yes. He did say that at the end. It felt kind of weird. I it think he was referring staged. to, I, f I feel like he was referring to how he doctored the documents. Okay. But I don't think he has any... Uh, I, I think he is still convinced that cloning humans His scientific is, work yeah, is, is legit, yeah. legitimate and also something that needs to happen for mm -hmm. the greater good, yeah. right? One thing, though, the way he describes how this is going to happen, one thing is missing from how he's going to achieve this, mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. So there is no mention of, you, you know, the ethical issues of, where are we going to get these eggs? Where are we? Right. Uh, are women going to be like human incubators for clones? Like because you still need uh, women, human women, to carry these babies, these clones. Yeah. Also, what are we going to do? Where does life start? Is it an embryo? Like it's just so so many things have mm -hmm. not been addressed, mm -hmm. and he's just like, no, this will change everything. This will be good, good, and good. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you know people aren't doing it already. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he was saying, and it really reflected. And he's probably really old. I think he's in his seventies, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and this reflects a lot of. <laughs> Korean men in power at the moment, because a lot of Korean men are of that generation, they don't really consider these questions. And they still, this country still sees women as wombs. And I have my personal experiences um, with, doctors. with doctors who implied that I am nothing but a womb. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they see men as bodies who will fill up the military mm -hmm. and women as wombs. So it's mm -hmm. like a very utilitarian. These old men are up there just like, you know, oh, we need more babies right now. So we're going to just give you all like $2,000 a month 
if you have babies. Mm-hmm. Also, all men are going to get an exemption of like, I don't know, like a month or six months from the military. If you have, it's something about like, if you have kids before the age of 25, mm-hmm. they, somebody suggested that you should be exempt from military service. Like mm-hmm. that's how serious they are. The, mm-hmm. the birth rate is the lowest it has ever been in history mm-hmm. in this country. I think we have the lowest birth rate besides the Vatican and like these um, city countries like Singapore and Hong mm-hmm. Kong, like we have the lowest birth rate mm-hmm. vis-a-vis like w- one woman is going to have, I think, 0.7 <laughs> children mm-hmm. in her lifetime. But it's because these people do not see us as human beings. So this is a very, this is the, uh, this is the thing that I was so fascinated mm-hmm. by with this documentary, is this ancient idea of women as the vessel of, of men's progress. Yes, for sure. And the women who, this guy becomes like a Christ-like figure. Mm-hmm. And the men and the women Mm -hmm. support him in a frenetic, cult-like way, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some. Yeah. But there is a different psychology Mm -hmm. to Korea itself because of this really strange kind of massive superego bearing down on everybody Mm. to do what's great for the nation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Freud has the idea of the... If, if your father is the one that you're brought up with who gives you the idea of rule of law and ethics and morality, this can go also to the nation. The idea of the superego is the thing that replaces the father and comes mm-hmm. down on you hard. Freud would have loved analyzing this situation and so much of the psyche of kind of the Korean mind, I think. The other thing that was interesting mm-hmm. to me is how this whole idea is wrapped, wrapped in with both religion and science. Mm-hmm. So the most striking thing mm-hmm. to me in this documentary is when the, there's a there's a priest, a mm-hmm. Catholic priest or Christian mm-hmm. priest. No, he was a Christian pastor. Christian Let's pastor. make that very clear because they are okay. two very different things, in, right. especially in this country. You're right. Okay, yeah. pastor. Mm-hmm. So he was a Christian pastor. Anybody pastor. could be a pastor. I got you. Okay. <laughs> but he has a, a, a son with cerebral palsy or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. And his son is like... Daddy, will I ever walk again? And he says, yes, God willing, you will walk again Mm -hmm. because of this man. After the son saw on the news that Dr. Huang was a fraud, he asked his dad, the pastor, will I ever walk again? Mm -hmm. And then instead of saying no, he said, God willing, you will. But it wasn't necessarily implied that Dr. Huang will make it happen. He said God will make it happen, which are very okay, different fair things. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, I that's fu- that's good you mentioned that because mm-hmm. I made it an association. You did make an association, and I could see why, because mm-hmm. I think like if you're just watching the translation, the yeah, way right, it right. was edited was really weird. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. but but then in the in the end, you know, even after he lied and all that stuff, mm-hmm. the scientist mm-hmm. towards the end, it's the. It's the pastor and the scientist sitting together in in the pew being buddies. I think the pastor still thinks that he could... Do it. Do it for, yeah, get it done for his son. Right. Even if it means it it could be done illegally, and that's probably why he remained friends with... I mean, this is a big assumption, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. You know, because that's just... The Christianity in Korea is also another, it's a whole Mm -hmm. nother topic for another day. Um, But a lot of these pathologies kind of came together in this documentary and weren't really addressed that much. Mm -hmm. And so it was so loaded that after we watched, we we initially just casually watched it. And then after it ended, we were just kind of like, whoa. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I will say this. The psyche of a nation is a real thing. Yeah, I will say this. And it's complicated. The whole, about the whole low birth rate. Mm. There's so, there's so much speculation mm-hmm. about why the birth rate is so low in Korea. And all of them, you know, they, they, they all have a point. But as somebody, as a, an actual woman in her childbearing years who decided not to have children, because everybody's saying it's a money issue, right? Mm-hmm. Housing is too expensive mm-hmm. and, you know, money, money, money. And then like, you know, education, whatever. Um, 
Technically, I could afford to have a child. Mm. We could technically afford. But the reason I'm not doing it is because, A, I don't have any faith in the future of this country at all. Uh-huh. Like, I just don't, I, I don't believe that things are not going to go to shit. Um, and second, I have to work. Like, capitalism, the participation in capitalism is absolutely mandatory. There mm-hmm. is absolutely no way I'm going to get out of this system. Mm-hmm. I have to work and produce mm-hmm. and pay taxes. That's all I'm ever going to do. But having a child is not mandatory. Mm-hmm. I can't do both. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm obviously going to choose the mandatory one mm-hmm. because I can't get out of it. If I could get out of the other one, I might... Consider the, you know, having a child. Mm -hmm. But I cannot, there's no way I'm going to get out of making money and Mm -hmm. paying taxes. Not in this city. Not in the city and not in this country, Mm -hmm. really. Right, true. Without being a huge burden on you and my parents and like, you know, everyone. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know why people have children, to be honest. I I don't either, especially in this country. Like, you know, at this time. Yeah, um, but that's, thank God that they are. And that's, you know, if they're making it work, like, but in my specific case, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I, it was a choice. And it, it's not a matter of them giving me a couple thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. A, it wasn't a choice mm-hmm. for me. There is no way in hell I'm going to bring a human being into this situation where that human being is going to have to be sentenced to a lifetime of capitalism, yeah. of indentured right. servitude mm-hmm. to like these conglomerates, mm-hmm. because that's what life in Korea is at the moment. Mm-hmm. And that is Service the real reason. Capitalism. That is the real reason women are not having children mm-hmm. and men sense. are not having children. It's not yeah. because we're choosing our careers. I did not choose this career. Mm-hmm. This career was thrusted upon me and it won't let me the fuck go. Mm-hmm. Like it's not going to this is not me choosing my career and i guarantee you a lot of women at least half of the women who did not have kids Mm -hmm. if they didn't have to work this hard continuously just to survive they would consider having kids yeah if we all lived kind of in a agrarian sort of village life yeah where we had to you know, grow our own potatoes. Yeah. It would make total sense. Yeah, it would make, yeah. And and if you're, if it was guaranteed that your children were going to be safe and taken care of, that they had a future ahead, that there was sort of an upward kind of. Yeah. But I just, it makes me so mad, this implication that all these selfish women are choosing their careers. I'm sure some people are. It's, it's just another example of the women as a vessel. Kind of Absolutely. Idea. So we're expected now to bear children, raise them to become these soldier taxpayers and literal soldiers, right? To defend the country and pay taxes. And we're also expected to contribute to the GDP mm-hmm. the same way a man would. That doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense. But babe, you do it for the greatness of Korea. Fuck the greatness of Korea. <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> but seriously. What do they expect? So they're totally missing the point that the... No, I'm being serious. Yeah. I'm being serious too. I think it is this kind of very sedimented idea of the greatness of the country, the mm-hmm. greatness of the nation. And why aren't women doing this for the greatness of the nation? But you know what the greatness of the nation is? The greatness of conglomerates. I'll, I will name them. The one that starts with an S, yeah. the one that starts, starts with, with an L, L and ends with a G. <laughs> Didn't we talk about that yes. before? <laughs> um, the one that starts with an H. Mm-hmm. It's the greatness of these very few companies mm-hmm. that, you know, and the government and these companies, like they pay each other money, mm-hmm. you know, to keep the status quo going. Mm-hmm. It's for these 70 year old men and yeah. their offspring right. to continue to thrive yeah. and oppress the rest of the population. Mm-hmm. That's what the greatness of the the greatness of Korea that they're talking yep. about. So, I don't know what the hell they're talking. They might have to start cloning us because mm-hmm. we're not 
this is not probably the next step yeah this is not going to get any better if they don't change something fundamentally Mm -hmm. rotten about this system Mm -hmm. i'm with you